watching live and we'll be watching on a recorded version uh, it's me orku mukherjee your it manager and we have uh, we are delayed with 13 minutes and we don't want to waste any more time so let's just start our today's cme with a 30 seconds countdown time Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, sir. And uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, Dr. M. P. Arya was supposed to inaugurate today's program, uh, so uh, he, somehow he could not join this webinar today. I'll request uh, Dr. Devnara and Kallani. uh in very short to inaugurate today's uh, cme program uh, thank you pradeep respected sir dr ishwara das dr iske joy sir my teacher respected dr mp arya sir my beloved brothers on screen and the viewers and we will be viewing next time today is a great day we are approaching towards the 75th cab of national stroke homeopathy alumni association with a panel discussion of a very important subject that our expectation and our attempts to achieve our target in 230 2030 mm-hmm. 2030 so anyway we will be getting very important information today from our brilliant speakers respected dr sunimar sarkar dr ishwara das dr s k tiwari my beloved brothers my teacher dr p arya and to some extent from kolai also we are thankful we are welcoming everybody with the heartiest respect and love to fulfill today's cme wow. Yes, with all this uh, th- thank you all for like please to continue uh, thank you kalani sir and uh, let us begin with the question answer that we have a very specific uh, flow uh, flow today the how we will conduct this cme uh, that we have a number of question to be asked to our uh, towards our panelist and by their answer what we expect is that we can make a concept note and this concept net will be forward to, forwarded to the uh, concerned department or concerned person uh, for the development of the homeopathy by 2030 and the my first question first first question to dr ishwar das first question to dr ishwar das sir uh, sir could you hear me yeah yeah i can hear you Thank you. One minute, Prala. We are trying to add sirs in the team. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is there. He is yeah. there. Sir, uh, sir, Ishwar Das, sir, will be very, will be very happy to listen from you uh, after a long time in the webinar. That uh, could you please focus on that? Uh, could you please brief us the homeopathic infrastructure in our country, and that infrastructure in terms of the training of the BHMS and the PG courses. Uh, as well as the regulation if there are any regulation to be changed for the course curriculum and the training is there any, any uh, is there any change is needed for the course okay yeah i'll do it. thank you thank you dr pralay thank, thank you thank you dr pra vidyut thank you dr pilyani and all my fellow panelists i think my voice is clear yes sir your voice is yeah. clear or audible okay yeah uh, i've been asked to talk in brief about the infrastructure and homeopathy in india as well as to suggest certain modifications which are which are required to make homeopathy uh, uh, in a broader perspective by 2020 2030 
friends uh, in this uh, contest uh, i'll i would like to go back in 2010 or 2009 when i was the director in nih under the chairmanship a uh, chairpersonship of uh, uh, the then secretary the former secretary anida das a vision statement was created for national institute of homeopathy there are two things one is uh, to create a vision statement for homeopathy in 2030 as well as to create a vision statement for an institution like uh, national institute of homeopathy i think we being alumnus of uh, nih we should focus mm -hmm. more on how best uh, this institute could be developed by 2030 to meet the challenges in healthcare in to meet the challenges in uh, homeopathic education to meet the challenges in homeopathic research and drug development these are the four major cornerstones yeah uh, but sir uh, i would like to interrupt you i will request all the panelists as well the president and secretary uh, to mute their uh, system otherwise some howling is coming please mute yeah sir thank you please carry on yeah thank you thank you actually the four major cornerstones of homeopathy are medical education medical any medical system is the medical education medical research the drug uh, development as well as the healthcare delivery system uh, we have to create uh, a, 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 a format for all in all the four areas and national institute of homeopathy being the premier institute on medical education we had to see how best this institute uh, can meet the challenges in healthcare and medical education the present uh, mm. uh, infrastructure in homeopathy we have about 159 uh, 259 homeopathic education about 15000 undergraduate students are getting admitted into homeopathy there were about 83 truck manufacturing units in india now there very recently there was an article on uh, the homeopathic pharmacy industry and with a vision for 2000 47 which states that the homeopathic medical industry as on 2017 was uh, 5783 crores and by 2020 it would reach to it would in 2030 it will reach to 26000 crores this is a this is a uh, article which has come uh, very recently which says which shows that the homeopathic industry is going to prosper very much simultaneously that when the industry grows that means uh, the, the the public acceptance of homeopathy is also growing okay. i'll not go into detail because the time is very okay. short but i'll tell you what are the major areas in which homeopathy can mm -hmm. and uh, can focus on 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 uh, on developing homeopathy as a most viable, correct, yeah, yeah. most acceptable yeah, most cost effective system in by 2030 homeopathic is getting gaining lot of popularity in in veterinary practices and that's a major area where uh, public concerns are there even who has concerned public health systems are concerned because human beings are using lot of veterinary products when veterinary products are are, are uh, contaminated with uh, bio medicine and toxic medicines and that directly affects the human being so homeopathic medicines are very safe to be used in veterinary practices and we have to see that how best it can be uh, uh, introduced officially in veterinary institutions and popularized in veterinary practices second is homeopathy in uh, in 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 agri care practices the same thing agri care practices it is becoming very popular a third one is in dental practices there have that uh, homeopathy has been used in dental practices at some places but it is not well organized some or other we have to introduce a short term courses in dental practices or dental courses and bring homeopathy in dental practices which will be more safe there was an article which says that dental uh, extraction before and after arnica and phosphorus are found to be very very effective in controlling infections and healing processes that we should take it up the 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 fourth point which uh, which is a big challenge for homeopathy is the lifestyle disorders and uh, long term diseases homeopathy constitutional approaches has got lot of opportunities for that we have to refine that homeopathy in uh, in 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 mal assimilation and mal absorption syndrome 
the lot of talk is there on uh, on uh, on home on on uh, on uh, deficiency diseases but deficiency diseases as is being perceived by biomedicine is different than the deficiency which the homeopathy is being perceived homeopathy mal assimilation and mal absorptions are uh, giving lot of importance where the substitution therapy is not going to be much helpful the fourth the fourth one is homeopathy in post and pre surgical conditions when government is talking too much about integrative healthcare approaches we have to take a stand on homeopathy how it can be refined in post and pre operative conditions and many of the pre operative and post operative conditions homeopathy could be very effective the third one and the final one uh, homeopathy has to be brought as a first line of treatment in primary healthcare in certain states uh, homeopathy is quite popular in primary healthcare services but in many of the other states its homeopathy is not being used much as it is being used homeopathy is very safe it is a green medicine it is less it more homeopathy is uh, uh, cost effective so we should see that how best homeopathy can be introduced in these things and the role of national institute of homeopathy in, in all these are very important we in being the alumnus of this institution we should see that we should create core groups in each of this group like uh, veterinary practices like in agricultural practices in dental care practices in land term diseases in deficiency diseases otherwise homeopathy is becoming popular that is happening on one side but when we are thinking about homeopathy in 2030 we have to focus on certain core a areas where other medical system has less to offer that is a very important thing so we can constitute small small groups to work on these things and create concept papers and uh, definitely that can be submitted to the authorities that would be one of the suggestions which i can uh, uh, i can give in this platform right now and we can continue to discuss with them thank you very much uh thank you uh, so much ishrada sir please please stay back uh i said we got the information and uh, to write a concept note on how the homeopathy can be improved the system can be improved ishrada sir we wanted to uh, focus on one point that in the basic level we do have a bhms course and in the upper level we do have post graduation course and this two, two, two courses are existing right now uh would you like to uh, focus on that uh, some some improved way of uh, training this clinical training uh, needs is a is a need of the hour to improve the quality of the physician and for which some regulation whether some regulation of uh, made by the cch earlier and by ncs right now can be incorporated that change some changes are needed into it or not in respect of the training of the courses thank you thank you dr prabhu it's a very yeah it's a very tricky question the regulations are beautiful actually as far as uh, i think uh, the regulations which are in existence or which have been in existence uh, in the in the last cch was also excellent it is at par with any modern medical education and the same thing is a small example i can tell you our students who are being trained in nih is uh, through the same regulation which is implemented by cch and nch and the same thing is implemented in another 259 institutions now what is happening mm. is the clinical train training which uh, which the students in nih gets is not getting at least about 10 20% of what the students who, who gets in nih because the hospital facilities are poor the clinical training is poor the exposure to clinical conditions are poor so that is not because of the regulation it is mainly because of the implementation uh earlier what happened dr pralay was uh, the homeopathy the, the homeopathy the students who comes to homeopathy was uh, uh, mainly interested in studying homeopathy they used to come and they used to study that is why when we were uh, admitted in dhms or prior to that there was an interest for the students to come and study in homeopathy now what is happening is yes. after the introduction of the neat examination we are getting students not interested in homeopathy 99% who comes to our institutions are not interested in study homeopathy they are <laughs> coming by 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 chance not by, by chance right yeah by not chance not by choice that yeah. yeah yeah so the we have to start from there 
it is not that uh, by changing the curriculum it's not going to i don't think that is going to improve but the thing is yeah. we have to see the, the 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 basic structure in which the students who are coming to interest whether neat examination is the only way of getting best students to homeopathic institutions is a important question in my experience what yeah. i have seen is most of the students who come to our institution in the first year they are not very keen to study there they will continue to prepare for the for making a set, second attempt in need to go somewhere else and by yeah. that way we are we are we are losing the first year teaching itself second year it happens yeah. then third year yeah. third year they become more frustrated fourth year they go mm. so it is not yes. that uh, we have to see whether yeah. we, whether we need 15000 students to be trained in homeopathy first whether we need 250 nine homeopathic institutions whether we can create yeah. one national institute at least in every state to be a model institute to other institutions see there are mm. in say, certain state there are about 59 homeopathy colleges but not even one government homeopathy colleges in that state and that this mm. just like government of india is uh, encouraging the the uh, all india institute of medical sciences in every state through the prime minister swasthya suraksha yojana we should see that at mm. least one all india institute of homeopathy or national institute of homeopathy is established in every state to create a sort of model institute to that institute one national institute okay. cannot be a model to 259 institution this is a problem so i don't think that the regulation yeah. is the main culprit the culprit is yes, sir, implementation yes, Calip. Thank you. Implementation in, in infrastructure. Sir, you got it. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, please stay back. Uh, uh, let me uh, invite on the dais uh, Dr. Niranjan Mahanti, sir. Uh, Mahanti, sir. Uh, Mahanti, sir. We have a Am very I? specific. Yeah. Uh, good, good evening, sir. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, sir. You are audible. You are audible. You are audible. Okay, okay, okay. And sir, we we do have a very specific question to you. In short, uh, you you need to answer, sir, because of the time constraint. That uh, you we all know that the homeopathy is very popular system of medicine, uh, having it practiced approximately eighty countries in the world. And uh, which country is the best uh, uh, have the best ecosystem for the growth of homeopathy uh, in in upcoming? uh 7 to 10 years so good evening to all the panelists and to the organizers so changes are taking place in all walks of life all over the world yeah any system is immune to change cannot withstand for longer period of time therefore each system should uphold the changes and make the system more vital this structure is an academic construct Basis and structure is knowledge. Knowledge is knowing about. Not knowing one cannot have full knowledge. The model of universal knowledge is model of universe. The known area known divided by area known is constant. Therefore, we have to have knowledge regarding everywhere occurring in the global platform. So far, my knowledge goes as the MVP, National Vice President of India, to Liga Medica or Homeopathic Internationalis. There are more than eighty countries. Assembled in the National Council meeting in every alternate year in different countries. So I have visualized that different countries are having homeopathy with some degree of accuracy, some degree. Just like China is there, Mexico is there, U.S. is there, and all South American countries like Brazil, like Argentina. and the uh, chili etc there homeopathy exists and european countries like great britain italy and uh, switzerland and spain france and the uh, germany everywhere homeopathy continues canada and everywhere but if you look to the one country america which is the largest resourceful country in in the entire globe is economically very strong Only two percent of people takes homeopathy. If you look to India, ten percent of people takes homeopathy. In the 2014 yeah, estimate. So, if you look to the German, half of the people are taking, but half are not. If you look to other countries like uh, there are st 
statistics are not there but india is growing day by day by by day and you why this happen my friend dr tas has already explained it is because of the government patronage this government patronage is one of the reason for development and second is our colonial connections in the west bengal the people from german they came and there were the teaching was impacted so that was the one other reason for that and if you look to the the infrastructure wise and uh, the development taking place we have the largest infrastructure for teaching purposes and medical purposes and we have strongest rules and regulations in our country despite to lacking we have everything in our country which can provide we can be leader of the entire globe for homeopathy but unfortunately our teaching has diverted into such a bol bol ha ho gaya we have produced only teachers we have produced only teachers by producing the subject in anatomy the subject in pottery in latin america organum and pharmacy which is but not ever 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 part of the subject wise which can culminate into clinical improvement so in other schools you can see the eye ent dental means they are confined to any of the organs so they are able to give more or clinical data and more innovative ideas with them no research is confined but our research is nothing it is only validating we are validating to the data given earlier in the material america or something else therefore our attention should be diverted from this to that as we have got very ample scope for acceptability affordability flexibility and low cost technical input low cost medicine value we have gathered in the manner we did if you look to the dot das board regarding the uh, capacity of uh, industrial capacities of uh, financial outlay us you can see that uh, the homeopathic product uh, market is in 2020 was 6.2 billion us dollar and we should expect that it should be in 2030 we expected to have till they have expected to 19.7 billion us dollar but to my mind it should be more than that in india also we should infuse to the other areas uh, and how to be we have to decide that so i have seen other in infrastructures and regulations in foreign countries in their very poor in regulations there is no course as we have got there are only some schools running and only a lot of doctors at them so there is no such infrastructure no such regulation and no such training program as india possesses therefore we are in a better position than other countries only developing trends are coming and the so there by there man thing is thought so we can tomorrow over and over sell over pet them we have we can teach them we can be leader of the entire globe on homeopathy tomorrow this is my sir mohanty sir is there any uh, is there any country which goes almost parallel to our country india or uh, 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 to some extent uh, less than our country india in the in the uh, growth of homeopathy uh, growth of homeopathy is in south africa next also growing Sir. south africa is growing also and usa i told okay. you 2% is growing and great britain is also growing so every country is growing themselves also that is no target uh, okay so as go as but teaching as i told the infrastructure teaching facilities and training modules and training programs is not like us anywhere in the world so monty sir will come back to you once again please stay back thank you so much for your answer now we'll go uh, i will uh, go to uh, sarkar sir dr shriman sarkar sir uh, uh, with a very specific question uh, or ko could you bring uh, sarkar sir on, on the dais uh, sarkar sir good evening and uh, here is a very specific question uh, to you and a number of audience is waiting to hear from you the question is the national health policy national health policy uh, 2017 of our country talks about cafeteria approach i repeat sir cafeteria approach in the national health system uh, what is your take 
on that from homeopathy perspective uh, is it an opportunity for growth or what you consider it is a hindrance in achieving the real or long lasting cure uh, could you focus into it sir uh sir so voice is possibly not coming sir sir unmute sir unmute sir uh colony sir am i audible colony sir am i audible you are audible you are audible, audible sir surface is not audible. uh sir let, uh, let uh, doctor sir, sir for the time being let dr sarkar sir uh, this internet and everything get restored in no. the meantime i uh, no. sir sir you are uh, yes sir you are you, you are audible and you are back you are back sir okay you are okay sir Sir, uh, did you uh, hear my question, or you could not yeah, hear? Yeah, yeah. Did you? Yeah. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. In other way, cosmopolitan approach or integrated approach. Yes, sir. How far it is effective? How far it is uh, really prosper? Moving away from homeopathy yeah, moving homeopathy or not? Now, question comes. Let us very. come to the point yes sir that main question most of the time we know or in our institution it is always discussed what are the limitation of homeopathy ji very few doctors or student or sincere student like proloy and others they are thinking what are the scope of homeopathy or what we can offer to the other science to be honest whenever we are observing that this cocktail be honest that what is the use of what is the at the present moment scenario of ayurvedic system those who are licensed to take lots of allopathic medicine in their private practice it was legalized and same yes, thing it has been happen 32 or 35 medicines homeopathy doctors can prescribe but what homeopathy can offer to the modern science that is not yet elaborated or published or accepted by the modern our policy makers remember that modern sir you are not audible colony sir colony sir you are uh, can you hear my voice sir colony sir yes yes i can hear Yes, you are clear. Sir, sir, sir. Is again one second. There is some kind of disturbance with uh, Doctor Sarkar sir network. Uh, sir, uh, uh, let uh, this system get uh, rest restored. Uh, by this time, let okay, me okay. Uh, pass on to pass on to our next panelist, Doctor Tiwari sir. Uh, Tiwari sir, are you there? Sir, Tiwari sir. Uh, Arko, could you bring Tiwari sir? Yes, yes, he is there. Ah, uh, Tiwari sir. Ah, uh, good evening. Uh, good evening, sir. Ah, uh, we will yeah, be evening. with Doctor Sarkar. Ah, uh, we will be with Doctor Sarkar, sir, very soon. If uh, once this connectivity get restored, ah, uh, sir, ah, uh, here is a very specific question for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That what should be our guiding principle for cases where homeopathy treatment adjuvant to standard allopathic mode of treatment. is there any road map template 
you would like to discuss uh, from your experience in such cases shall uh, sir shall i repeat the question or you got it no 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 i got it i got it you got it so, uh, and good good evening all the my friends are in the list of panelists and i'll be very uh, to the point uh, answer yes sir yes sir see see uh, the adjuvant means <coughs> something which uh, continues together and helping each other yes so so sometimes you get in our practice like patient of thyroid they come and say that see i have got uh, treatment of thyroid i am continuing uh, some drug yes. every day can i discontinue and can you help me just like that bp patients some patients have diabetes <clears throat> yeah and some patients to uh, come to improve their immunity like uh, they are taking allergic medicines every day some antihistamine they want to taper down or they want to stop uh, one patient i remember uh, he had been uh, i mean he had kidney transplant and he wanted to improve the immune system so that kind Jay. of patients come in our day to day practice even cancer patients most of the chronic yeah. diseases they come to improve their uh, uh, immunity and side by side they are taking allopathy also so in Jay. those things we have seen our medicines do help now the yes. road map what i feel is there are three levels suppose asthma patient allergy patient comes there are three levels first level is to give relief and palliative treatment second level is a constitutional third level is miasmatic treatment so uh, we see the case like if the case comes with acute a case of asthma yeah. comes <clears throat> he has been on the puff he is taking some anti allergy <clears throat> sorry some uh, something like bronchodilators and all those and he is in chronic condition he wants to discontinue that and we have seen our medicines have helped if it is continuing side by side so even in that case when the uh, wheezing comes you know some kind of arsenic and timtard indicated medicines palliative medicines we can give and after treatment is over for the acute we can work out constitutional medicines like we have seen yeah. chakaria ka uh, matram sal if it is given weekly the attack becomes less and less and slowly we can uh, taper down their medicines and the patients can be taken care with only homeopathy medicine similarly thyroid levels joint problems tonsillitis and fever you know some patient comes with the every week they have got fever with toxins so slowly with our medicines they improve so in these kind of chronic conditions where patients are dependent on allopathic medicine the adjuvant homeopathic medicines can be given with lot of benefit the only thing which i i suggest is there are three levels palliative then go for constitutional and magnetic now uh, in is 10 years in another 10 years yeah. we are thinking of 2030 such conditions may be more and more and then constitutional yeah. treatment we have to treat i mean we have to teach all the students to go for constitutional and how to go about constitution and magnetic and then some kind of improvement you will see and then we can win over this chronic cases by only hope ji okay. sir uh, sir uh, this is a very we got your answer sir as well what we understand is that uh, this approach what you have been saying that some someone should go for the uh, to give the relief to the patient that is that could be a palliative one and then we will come to constitutional one then we will give the anti miasmatic one but this uh, concept that differs from one person to another person means one homeopath to another homeopath could you make uh, could we make uh, some framework that everyone every homeopaths will abide by the rules regulation or the philosophy in the same manner <laughs> that there will be no difference between the two doctors yeah. in the concept in the concept how this system can be built up see there should not be any difference because our law is same 
totality yeah. has to be approached yeah. so if the law is same and we are following the principle of totality there should not be any difference the difference remains yeah. at the level of case taking and understanding the case this has yeah. to be taught in every uh, college especially the internship program has to be fully with the kind of this kind of treatment and uh, yeah. i don't agree that uh, two homeopathic doctors differ because if they have the same principle if yeah. they follow the same way of case taking and coming yeah. to the uh, whatever prominent in the case take for the totality report rise most of the people will get the same medicine so what we have to follow is the same principle approach should be the totality there is a the totality for yes, acute sir. there is totality for yes, the constitutional there is totality for the miasmatic and we have to yes, strictly sir. follow this totality and there should not be any difference thank you so much sir sir please stay back uh, i'll request orgo to bring uh, sarkar sir once again if uh, his network has restored uh, uh, we can try we can try for that um sarkar sir is facing uh, sarkar sir is facing the camera permission issue um uh, it's a request to okay, sir okay. Uh, please uh, please uh, can you allow your camera permission As a okay, 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 okay. Orko, Orko, we will we will not uh, delay for that. We will be continuing our program. Okay. And in the meantime, once okay. his network, every system gets uh, restored, we will be back to him. Uh, I I would like to uh, focus uh, a question to Dr. Partho Partho Prothin. Dr. Partho, uh, Orko, please bring Dr. Partho. Partho, Dr. Partho Potimpal, he is right now in uh, CCRH. Uh, Partho, uh, yeah, yeah, you are audible. Part, good Dr. Dr. Partho, we, good evening. We have a very, uh, uh, very specific question for you, and I have kept this question for you to hear from you. That Par, Dr. Partho, in the last two decades, in last two decades, we have seen a great attention being given to research in homeopathy. great attention towards research in homeopathy this has certainly this has certainly paid well by improving the overall ecosystem of research in our country in regards to homeopathy uh, but while doing so while doing the research methodology and research a lot of person comes uh, for the consultation uh, for and you take uh, all research that take them uh, for the for the treatment procedure and research uh, procedure too while doing so do you think that the clinical practice clinical practice and skill has taken a back has taken a back back seat in last couple of years and if yes uh, then how can you bring back our focus towards the core strength of homeopathy that is clinical practice by 2000 uh, 2030 by 2030 Uh, did you get my question dr partho yes, yes sir yes sir i got it uh, okay. so be be before i start i just want to say one thing that uh, clinical research and clinical practice this is something which you cannot leave uh, any one of them in one uh, any one of them you cannot just go without I means something this is they are actually dependent on each other man if we think that um, for doing clinical research we can uh, our clinical practice is getting our clinical practice skills are getting compromised i think this yes. is not exactly not not exactly a right thought because if we see yes. the research approach and uh, if we see uh, deliberately uh, i mean uh, very much uh, specifically we see the research approach uh, we can see that the research is something out of uh, which is actually done out of the whole thing means if i try to explain you that the whole population the whole uh, the uh, citizens of india or who wants homeopathy they are actually looking for the clinical practice they are looking for uh, the benefits they can get out of homeopathy but in that we are picking up some samples not i uh, should not say it like that but samples is a word we use actually in our clinical trials so we mm-hmm. pick out certain uh, uh, group of people if, if i say it like that who fits to our study and with them we actually go with something which we are looking for that yeah. what now the question is what we are actually looking for we are actually looking for something which may be something new or which may be something uh, already was there we try to revalidate it 
or we are uh, maybe trying to give society some new outcomes or new feedbacks which is again important for clinical practice only so this is a cycle basically it means from clinical practice we need to think about research and from research what we get we again need to revalidate in the clinical practice these two things actually need to uh, alter with each other from time to time and each of them are dependent on each other research is not all about clinical practice definitely it is also about preclinical studies which is done basically in labs in in, uh, in uh, lab models in animal cell models in vitro in vivo studies those are preclinical research but when we come to the clinical research which is the highest level of research for the benefit of public health and human society i think clinical practice is something which actually give us the idea from which we get the research idea means when a person is actually practicing in a in anywhere in maybe in from his private practice in maybe in some clinics or maybe in government dispensaries etc from there actually he gets an idea or something comes in his mind and that is actually a researcher mind only and then when we take up that in a research we need to follow certain protocols because research demands certain protocols because otherwise the outcome will not be accepted but where from this clinical uh, research idea comes from clinical practice only so ha huh, okay. in research model when we pick up those uh, group of people or pick up that sample again i am saying that like in that way we are getting restricted to certain uh, inclusion criteria certain exclusion criteria but it doesn't mean that we are actually compromising the patient in is is maximum uh, benefits which he or she deserves from us because the most important thing we look for uh, man we take from them is their consent it's not that blindly we are doing or taking him or her to our clinical trial model we are explaining them what is we are going to do with them and whether they are perfectly comfortable with that or not after that we have a patient information sheet which they are signing and then they are entering in our study with every pitfalls we are explaining before and that if anything happens in between any negatives or side effects whatever we say we are going to take responsible of that and we are not going to leave her him or her in the middle of the study somewhere so definitely so, so yeah so part of doctor doctor part so wow. yeah uh, yeah research is very important for the development of any science and hence it should be uh, done and it should be enhanced and i think ccrh is doing the right kind of research we need at the present day and for development of homeopathy i think research should be done to its maximum level which actually ultimately comes from clinical practice model uh thank you dr partho and uh, it was wonderful to hear from you and we understood that uh, research is research is a backbone of any system that without research a uh, system cannot survive that we always wish to get it get it done at the same time you have from you have uh, elaborated you have focused on a subject that while doing research the benefits of the patient is not been lost they are benefited and if there is some some uh, complication you also take care of that and uh, i would like to ask one uh, very uh, very important question very relevant question right now uh, there is a ethical committee into it right. that well, wherever wherever you do research there is a ethical ethical committee permission is needed and they sit what we have seen they have they uh, do see uh, the benefits of the patient then only they allow it uh, is that true that is that true that ethical committee of of each and every ethical committee are uh, genuinely uh, they they uh, focus on the interest of the patient uh, right sir do they is, uh, right sir as per the jcp guidelines uh, every the first principle is basically based on the ethical approval of any protocol uh, uh, as okay. far as long the ethical committee is not satisfied that where uh, the ethics of the patient is uh, followed in every angle of the study they will not approve it and uh, rightly so mane whether it's a institutional research committee or in our council we also have a central research committee for multicentric studies it is uh, rightly taken care of and as i said uh, every aspects of the ethics on behalf of the patient is been considered and in that cases for an, just an example many many of in a placebo control trial where we might go for one group where the patient will be treated with placebo and if that placebo group is not properly defined means if placebo means we are not giving medication to the patient so ethically yeah. at times it might becomes very much controversial whether this design is proper or not 
but that too we have alternatives and ethical committee okay. looks for that and if not they will not pass that so ethical committee is the backbone of any kind of research approval and there are other several committees also as per ccrh is concerned we have to go through three layers of committee and ultimately ethical to approve any kind of research protocol so the thank you thank you doctor thank you dr partho and uh, because it was very nice to hear from you but there is uh, some uh, issue with the time constraint uh, i think that uh, dr sarkar sir is back back on the stage could you bring uh, sarkar sir uh, on the we stage we are trying to uh, we okay, are trying okay, to bring okay. up uh, bring up sir okay, he will be on okay. screen when he will be on screen as soon as then uh, he will be on the screen i don't have to ask okay okay i got it i will uh, or go uh now i would like to uh, ask one question to dr himanshu tiwari uh or can you bring uh, dr tiwari on the dais on the dais dr himanshu tiwari Him uh, dr himanshu uh, good evening and uh, here is a very specific question for you i have kept a question for you that is a long question in fact it's a long question the answer may be a very in short but uh, the question is long that question is that uh, we all are aware we all are aware about the rising burden of chronic diseases all across the world and as per who the non communicable diseases ncds kills 41 million people each year equivalent to 71% of all death globally and un Conve convention on ncd recommended in section 45 age for effective use of traditional medicine or uh, to come back with it how homeopathy can contribute efficiently successfully in dealing with this this serious health menace by 2030 you got my question yeah i got got, got the question sir uh, good okay. evening to all the distinguished panelists host inaugurator and audience it is an absolute honor to uh, join this panel discussion my sincere uh, gratitude extends to dr kalyani sir bidhu da and prolay sir for having me here tonight uh, sir this is a very very relevant question that you have asked tonight and i would say this question should be in the front and center of all our discourses uh, in homeopathic fraternity for the reason being that uh, uh, somehow or the other the, the message or the the attraction to the undergraduates or the young practitioners uh, is more attracted towards the emergency acute cases and so on so forth however the the, the biggest burden of chronic disease uh, the biggest burden of uh, disease is the non communicable or the chronic disease in the society and uh, as you very rightly mentioned the who 2018 uh, guideline says that uh, So 71% of the deaths are uh, due to the chronic disease as a matter of fact uh, i would like to highlight another fact uh, uh, to this uh, piece of information that uh, 86% of the premature deaths that is the age between uh, of uh, say uh, uh, younger population i would say 30 to 69 age group uh, mm -hmm. 86% of death are due to chronic disease and in india uh, it is estimated that uh, 60% of death is due to chronic disease causing 54 billion us dollar and reduction of 1% of gdp so oh. this chronic disease this chronic disease is the real burden and the real challenge uh, for healthcare but since this uh, this is not uh, this does not appear uh, uh, attractive so we uh, tend to less focus on this but this is the forte this is the stronghold of homeopathy and so we need to continuously discuss on this and uh, deliberate on its finer shade now coming to the uh, the response to this uh, as we uh, as you rightly mentioned that united nations uh, uh, proposed a guideline where it mentioned that uh, since conventional medicine is not capable to deal uh, the chronic diseases the, it is causing more iatrogenesis it is uh, the cost is astronomically high and it cannot be uh, reached out to all the people because of this uh, yeah, uh, yeah. cause so uh, homeopathy is a very bigger role in today time and the time to come 
four important yes. aspects that we need to identify about homeopathy and we need to propagate to the masses that is it's safe effective popular and sustainable safe in the time yeah. where third leading cause of death is a drug disease there cannot be any better time to focus on those system of medicine which is more safer effective we know yeah. popular we know it uh, and uh, dr monty has said it is uh, popular in more than 80 countries and sustainable yes sustainable economically as well as ecologically now coming to the second point that i would like to highlight about uh, efficient uh, uses of homeopathy is also overcoming the challenge of perception and narrative today truth is not uh, supreme today no one has time to find out the real truth in fact perception built on narrative become the accepted truth we have to deal with this accepted truth and the deception against homeopathy is based on ambiguity where mixing fact and fiction so that one cannot disentangle from one another so here we need to set forth our narratives very clearly based on fact and besides that we need to educate patient also about the homeopathic model of health and recovery uh, through different media channels because this will increase the outreach and acceptance of homeopathy third point i would like to uh, uh, highlight here is review of allopathic therapeutic this is something that i have experienced over the uh, time in uh, practice in urban population and that is uh, the review of therapy, allopathic therapeutics that is that is being practiced around us in fact to uh, to highlight hennemann's organ and start with an introduction of 30 pages and 99 paragraph which, which basically uh, discusses about the re- review of allopathic therapy at that point in time in today's time when we are training and uh, discussing organ and we tend to forget or uh, miss the review of therapeutics of contemporary time suppose uh, if you don't discuss that then it is very natural for undergrads to be attracted towards the more uh, uh, glamorous uh, system of medicine we need yes, to yes, uh, yes. highlight we need to highlight uh, time and again what happened when the thalidomide was given to pregnant ladies and how it uh, uh, created phocomelia in thousands of population what happened with the vioc which was given uh, and it, it, it caused 50000 deaths uh, in, in globally and what happened with the anti allergic drug, drug called seldain which was given for anti allergic but causes cardiac arrhythmia in several uh, patients and so on so forth similarly in a day to day practice patient is coming taking allopathic drug and suffering with gastritis then he is given antacid which causes calcium deficiency then he is given calcium supplement which causes constipation and heart issues and so on so forth we need to be uh, awareing our uh, medical graduates more and more about the contemporary practices of allopathy Uh, not the gl- glamorous side but also the gray zone uh, so that they get the real picture and fourth uh, 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 last but not the least the practicing of uh, hanimanian model of chronic disease uh, this 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 is very sorry to say but uh, mostly the otega model of chronic disease has been propagated as a uh, hanimanian model of chronic disease uh, uh, yeah. no one is uh, referring to the, uh, the the real hanimans model of chronic disease hence we are seeing less and less reversal of chronic disease or long term remission with the homeopathic uh, uh, mode of treatment so we need to focus on our fundamental as well to get high standard of homeopathy given to the patient over to you sir uh thank, thank you, you so much you. dr himanshu uh, dr himanshu thank you so much and uh, uh, orko uh, could you uh, bring dr ishada sir on the on the show Dr. Ishada sir is there, no? Ishada sir, could you hear me? Uh, please unmute, sir. Dr. Ishada sir, please unmute. We'll just wait for a few seconds. yeah we could not get him uh vidyut uh, orko or orko uh, could you bring uh, mohanti sir please on the dais uh mohanti sir uh, once again welcome back to our show uh, sir uh, we have a very uh, we have a very specific question we have kept for you to hear a very uh, interesting answer uh that uh, sir do you think that introducing introducing fellowship in different clinical specialty 
after doing the BHMS and MD, that introducing fellowship in different clinical specialty will help our professional to deal efficiently with changing demand of the society by 2030. Uh, would you like to uh, give? Uh, yes. I would like. I would like to give a concept note into it: the fellowship yes. and homeopathy. Yes, I can say that it's necessary. Yeah. Human knowledge has become unmanageably vast. Each science has begotten to a dozen or more. Each chapter more complex than the rest. Entire corpus of medical science has creeped in thousand isolated fragments. Homeopathy is also growing, growing, growing in a very large scale. Therefore, it is the necessity of the time to have this kind of training, uh, this kind of facilities, because it is the it, it, it is to develop critical ability by this yeah. fellowship. It is a critical yeah. ability, critical ability, improving the skill and uh, specific in specific field required for research and uh, uh, professional ability and uh, yeah. uh, pro promotion of uh, uh, efficient communication also. One has to get yeah. this. Yeah. So under sir, what are the sir? What are the subject? Uh, what are the subject concern? What are the yeah, subject yeah, concern? Yeah. In clinical clinical practice yeah, yeah. has to be brought for brought in front for the fellowship. Clinical yeah. subjects has to be brought for brought in front for the fellowship. Clinical yeah. subjects, which are the areas. Yeah, I, I like to emphasize to our youngsters okay. there are a variety of fellowships. Okay. Not by the government departments. And private organizations like say, many organizations and reputed institutions, colleges, and universities. But we do not yeah. have shared them. So, next is you can say that uh, the type of fellowship existing in the world is all discipline fellowship, which are project oriented. So, through project, you have request for academic disciplines. Alumni okay. fellowship, virtual alumni fellowship. And, and uh, institutional fellowship and okay. cohort fellowship and okay. different kind of fellowship like flexible fellowship and many other there yeah. are a number of problems. But in our homeopathy, the only Ministry yeah. of Pius is providing through CCRS few fellowships. Apart okay. from that, no other is providing. And if the experimental project somebody is getting, he's getting one of the yeah. projects. So this is yeah. very eager in considered to the population of three thousand three lakhs homeopaths to get a exposure to this kind of training. State governments okay, do not have anything. And okay. foreign countries, there is no thing for homeopathic fellowship. Yeah. World Health Organization has stopped giving some treatment. So under these circumstances, my perception goes in such a way yeah. that the teachers should be oriented in such a way. They should get more right. projects and more creation of more fellowship on them. So fellowship means those are 20 to 30 years. They get for two to three years, just like PhD, they get three years or extended five years. So our projects yes, are more from the teacher side. If teachers get yeah. more projects from various sources, even from CSD, CSIR, and from DST, they can apply for yeah. one so that we can get yeah. more fellowship. Thereby the ability Thank to Enhance, we grow more. So it is yeah, sir, thank you. Time. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Please stay back, sir. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, focus one question to, to Dr. Ishoda, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sir, sir, do you think that uh, more and more homeopaths, homeopaths graduates who are basically very brilliant, mm -hmm. and they uh, homeopathy graduates and postgraduates too? Mm -hmm. That they are migrating from homeopathy mm -hmm. to other mm -hmm. career option. There mm -hmm. are many career option like like public health career option, like mm -hmm. insurance mm -hmm. career option. Mm -hmm. uh, do uh, how do you uh, contemplate that tra that trend by two zero three zero? There is a yes. trend sir, in last See. few decades. This uh, this trend is something very positive to some extent. Like, are, are you, uh, okay. Can you hear me? Because uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Sir. yes, sir. We can hear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This uh, is uh, something very, very positive in one some way. Maybe 
in some way it may be a bit negative see dr prale yeah. uh, our output yeah. our input is about 15000 students per year they yeah. they come they come from a very strong scientific background and trend plus to mm. competitive examination mm. they are one of the brightest mm. students we are getting now now mm. when they come into our system and the first yeah. uh, possibly in the under graduation uh, they explore possibilities of their peers where they are studying where they are working where the, how the career options are coming unlike earlier period where uh, homeopaths were having very limited options to go on uh, on uh, on other courses on parallel courses or uh, on uh, other sectoral courses now these graduates of homeopaths are eligible to apply and undertake studies in multidisciplinary courses this is in turn suppose our students are bright enough and they they have strong convictions in homeopathy they will be a great mm. assets in doing enriching homeopathy through research through you know, promotional activities and in in policy making if some of the students goes to public health or some of the go- students goes to microbiology courses or bio human genomics if the student is bright enough and having conviction in homeopathy he will continue to enrich homeopathy the students is a frustrated one who came out of the institution and they go to uh, other courses he he will continue to be a liability in homeopathy as well as in other system so don't worry about mm-hmm. that my my experience is <laughs> my yeah, yeah my experience is the people yeah. who have strong who has gained strong conviction in homeopathy wherever they go yeah. they keep the they yeah. keep the flagship of homeopathy they should do it that is that is mm-hmm. going to enrich homeopathy we need not worry about okay. it unfortunately okay. the government is also not providing enough scope for Uh, career options to these fifteen thousand of students who are coming out. So <clears throat> let let them let them. There are a lot of opportunities because in homeopathy we 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 the practitioners alone is not sufficient to enrich homeopathy for future. We need policy making. Yeah. We need uh, good uh, good academicians. We need uh, good uh, researchers. And you see, as one of Dr. Tiwari has told. we have to create narratives in every field if a homeopathic doctor becomes a anchor in some of the tv channels he can create yeah. a better narrative homeopaths yeah. there are there are very good students who are public speaking they are efficient in public speaking they go to politics yes. there yes. are good yes. homeopaths who are at in administration they go to administration yeah. so so they can all enrich homeopathy so narrative okay. on homeopathy is also required creating awareness is also required so some homeopaths going in other field we need not tori we should encourage that those who have caliper okay. and mm. the as the demand comes this uh, this this will prevail so i don't think that it's a negative thing but to some extent the more tragedy what is happening is not there the tragedy happening is about more than 80% of the students coming to homeopaths are in any medical field is ladies the girls students. yeah 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 so girl students. students yeah they they continue to study here and after after the studies we are we are losing a majority of them uh, as housewife or uh, they yeah. once they qualify they want to have a title as a doctor but we are losing not only homeopathy we are losing them from any career options this is a big tragedy yeah. happening this is happening and not some only of some of them yeah. are they they want to be in a safe zone doesn't want to take risk this is a tragedy this is a national loss this is a national yeah, loss yeah national loss because uh, the yeah. precious time which they have spent they are using that only to get a title and to have a better yeah. better marriage marriage prospects yeah yeah so yeah yeah bright students going to tangential courses and diverse courses is to some extent good for homeopathy there nothing yeah. to worry about it and if somebody okay. gets extreme knowledge in microbiology or human genomics or quantum physics or in bio in biotechnology Bi- they are biotechnology they are going to, they are going to enrich you thank you doctor thank you sir thank you so thank much you. sir for your information uh, orko i could see uh, arya sir sometime in the on the uh, webinar uh, is he there on the in this webinar right now arya sir 
M P Arya sir, is it there? No, he was there. I guess. Okay. There. No, no, no. Okay, he okay. Has left. Uh, he, he has, has left. Some Spanish. Okay, fine. Oh, okay. Okay, yes, okay, sir. fine. Ah, uh, sir. Sarkar sir is back. No. No. Then I will. I will go to. Uh, Tiwari sir, once again, could you bring him on the dais? Orko, please. Tiwari. Doctor Sarkar sir, again. Doctor Sarkar sir, again. Hello. Sarkar sir. Tiwari, Tiwari sir, please, please stay back for a moment. Please stay back uh, for a moment because after a long time, we could restore this Doctor Sarkar sir's uh, uh, this uh, visual field and. Uh, Sarkar sir, uh, we have been talking. I believe that you haven't forgotten the question that uh, we started with the question question of uh, national health policy, and uh, we were talking about the cafeteria approach. That uh, whether this cafeteria approach it is a growth, uh, it's a good for us, or it is a hindrance, or it is a loss for homeopathy. That we have been talking about. Just one thing that any approach good or bad, that depends on who is using or who is thinking too much regarding this policy in reality. Honestly, if we go through this cafeteria process, modern medicine or the allopathic medicine already engulfed nearly 90% of the Ayurvedic system. I am not against or for, but remember, recently this cafeteria approach and we are excited that we can use some allopathic medicine. Good, because knowledge is always accepted. But the, as Dr. Ishwar Dasha has told very nicely, that homeopathy students, they rarely believe in homeopathy. People's believe in homeopathy but very, very rarely, with few exceptions, most of the students, they are not interested in going through the Materia Medica. Whenever we are accepted paracetamol, nauseating, med anti-vomiting medicine, antibiotics, painkiller, it accepts, we are already accepted that homeopathy has no medicine for acute condition. We have to think that in which way the science by the name of science, the modern medicine is rather encroaching the homeopathy system. Dr. Monty has told nearly 80 country, it has homeopathic application. But remember, most of the homeopathy doctors, they cannot treat bacterial infection, viral infection and cancer. That is the law. Next. Another thing we have to think that by the name of this ethical committee, I think Proloy knows very better than me regarding this, that dengue, then COVID, have you able to treat legally? That is the question. We are claiming, we are telling India is the best possible homeopath, number of homeopath has increased, but reality is something else. I know by the name of this ethical committee, what is going on when Dr. Bhor trying to prepare medicine from the COVID, then ethical committee repeatedly hinder their activities because they are telling Nozot, homeopathy has no value and simultaneously you cannot prepare the nozots from the virus or the bacteria. Very funny thing. So, reality that with respect, if we can prepare the clinical homeopaths that who can offer so many things in obstetrics, in eye diseases, before and after surgery, when sepsis condition, when antibiotic fails, by this way, clinically proved, they can handle this allopathic medicine in a better way, not for the general student. Most probably, by the name of 
when they will apply this 32 medicine, they will forget the homeopathy. So we have to be very honest and with respect. If we get Yes. Again, he has been disconnected. So once again, yeah, again, once again, he's disconnected. Uh, uh, Colin, sir, shall we wait for him or we'll pass on to no, uh, our we'll next panel. panelist? Next okay. panelist, I'll, I'll uh, next panelist, I'll, I'll, I will you know, like to be with Tiwari, sir. Is it there? Tiwari, sir, is there? Tiwari, sir. Arko, please bring, sir. Could you bring Tiwari, sir? No, uh, uh, Dr. S.K. Tiwari, sir. Dr. S.K. Tiwari, sir. Uh, uh, yes, sir, sir. Tiwari, sir, welcome yes. back once again. And, uh, sir, next question, the second question of this webinar today towards you, that we talk about the integrated yes, sir, approach, all is... Sir, uh, am I audible now? Yeah, now it's okay. Audible. Sir, we talk about the integrated approach. Always we talk about the integrated approach. And this integrated approach does have some roadblocks, some roadblocks as well. Uh, do you see them? And what can be the possible road roadmap for more cohesive integration? We talk about integrated approach. And there are roadblocks, and we need very cohesive integration of our existing infrastructure. Uh, could you make some uh, concept note into it? Okay. See, when we talk of integrative approach, the integration yeah. has to be of the knowledge. Because uh, uh, wherever we are lacking, we have to integrate there. It's not that integrative means uh, we have to... Uh, combine the treatment and uh, we mix the treatment of homeopathy. It's not that way. The meaning of integrative is to make a person complete physician to handle all type of cases. Somewhere we have limitation. Somewhere we have good score. So the place where we have limitation, uh, only with the medicine, we cannot go ahead uh, for giving best care to the patient. Because it is ultimately the patient who should be benefited with our knowledge and with our approach. So some yes. cases uh, we, we try to integrate, but what happens is their aim is palliation and our aim is cure. Let us not say palliation. Mm. Their aim is suppression. Most of the places, you know, where uh, we start with them, if something comes up, you know, immediately the patient becomes very uh, <clears throat> hyper. They go and get suppressed. Mm. So that kind mm. of integration is not required. Integration has to be in the knowledge and in technology. Like our graduate and yeah, yeah. should be able to handle the emergency case. Like if there is mm. a dehydration, if mm. there, uh, if you are treating a case of uh, aplastic anemia and where the uh, person has come with the just 3% or 4% hemoglobin, it needs blood transfusion. You should know what yeah. kind of uh, technology has to be used in the case of uh, you are uh, uh, handling a dehydration case, all emergency care, like suturing. Like uh, we had in Calcutta Homeopathic Medical College when we were in turns, we are handling all emergency care of uh, you know, suturing because those knowledge are not going out. I mean, uh, our graduates are not able to just suture, uh, give on uh, in, in necessary some intravenous uh, fluid also, which is required to be integrated. And also the like yes, see, crisis came like COVID and all that. We should be able to uh, at least give oxygen uh, at the home, IV at yeah. home. Even Hanuman has uh, suggested that some kind of uh, surgical technical things a graduate should know. So integration when we talk, a cohesive internet, it should be technical and for the knowledge and even for the benefit of the patients, all the things which can help like supplements, a kind of thing where it is very urgent, we have to give. And then followed by our treatment in long term, which can be benefited. So integration means so, 
combining all the things which benefits the patient and not yeah. mixing the treatments that is what so thank you so thank you so much sir <laughs> please stay back we'll uh, we will come back again as uh, so i will request sarkar sir to continue so sir please continue sir from from where you ended yeah so question comes that integration the by the name of integration if we are influenced by the modern medicine forgetting our philosophy yeah uh, forgetting our own identity i am telling forgetting homeopathic philosophy identity and individualization most probably we will dig our own grave as most of the european country by the name of science scientific um, analysis of homeopathic approach ultimately uh -huh. there is no homeopathy because the same one, same same thing sir same thing sir dr tiwari sir was was saying this Techno technologically we, technologically we can integrate hmm. because Sir, individualizing approach the yeah. homeopathic basic principle and their general approach we cannot make or we cannot sit on the same identity or same chair or the same value individualization is hmm. a must and yeah. that we if we homeopath forgets and honestly sorry to say actually this is not the proper platform i know <clears throat> by the name of the employment of the homeopathy doctors in different schools colleges by different government how they are treating as a second class or third class citizen they are not they are simply measuring with tapes and height and weight they are they are forgetting they are they are telling their doctors but how they are regretting themselves and dishonored by the other school of thought i know very well everybody is hiding but i am telling very honestly because basically i am a clinician and i know until and unless we are clinically efficient honestly i am praising dr proloy like proloy it will be very difficult to make the friendship with modern medicine ji yeah. hmm because respect is the first thing and even by the name of this conjoint venture i know when any clinical trial on malignant on incurable cases at the terminal patient they will send to you and they will prove it that homeopathy it is not working but yeah hmm, that is the problem the same patient at the same stage let them do but it will never happen and cause everybody know i am not uttering so it is very difficult to fight to save our own entity knowledge everything everything it is desirable whether pharmacology toxicology whatever it is but we should stay on our own principle that is the individualization thank you sir uh, thank, you. thank you so much sir uh, sir please stay back we'll be coming to you once again Uh, that we are on the end of this webinar today and we have a few question to ask if i don't ask this webinar will be incomplete one let me once again uh, request uh, dr partha pratimpal to be on the dais and to uh, give a, one answer of a very specific question uh, dr partha uh, we all know the aishman bharat we yes. aishman bharat pradhan mantri uh, jan aarogya yojana the pm joy Uh, is considered a big leap towards the universal health coverage in our country and how homeopathy can contribute into it by achieving this universal health care coverage in our country is there any possibility or we will see somebody is doing and we will follow whether by homeopathy this homeopathy can be a part a strong part in aishman bharat in pradhan mantri jan aarogya yojana okay uh, right sir uh, before i say anything first of all we sh uh, should be very much clear we are clear basically but still i am saying aishman bharat is not only for ayush i mean uh, many people think that ayush aishman bharat related it's actually the word aishman which we basically say during um, anybody say giving blessings to anybody aishman bhava means 
the uh, long live live this is actually a blessing for long life so that is what we mean by the word ayushman here it's not only related to ayush it's related to the whole he- uh, whole health system and uh, if you see what is actually ayushman bharat it's basically the largest health scheme as sir said and yeah. uh, if you see the benefits it's actually covering uh, 5 lakhs per family and uh, irrespective yeah. of the size of the family and uh, the government have target basically to uplift the healthcare facility and especially for the rural people and the poor people and uh, seeing this main objective there are many objectives i'm not going into the uh, line by line the yes dr parthu will focus fo- will focus the homeopathic contribution right sir is right, there sir. any possibility uh, yeah, so yeah. if we see what is actually this ayushman bharat is basically to provide this health facility to the uh, remote areas to the people who are deprived from the facility which they are supposed to get as citizens of india but and so this um, initiative is basically to provide a uh, um, health facility by bringing all the sectors of health means whether it's an hospital whether it's a clinical dispensary or a wellness clinic lab pharmacies all under the same umbrella so what does this help this helps you actually to get access to many things which you may not be aware of and yeah. when you actually uh, getting access to this you are actually also having a important part of this mission i mean to have your health uh, records registered and this is also in yeah. a long term yeah. planning to have a longitudinal health records which may be available with you digitally and you need not to carry reports to wherever you go anywhere in india if you are registered and if you are going to the impelled dispensaries under this ayush um, ayush um, ayushman bharat clinics now what homeopathy has to do here man precisely coming to it since we are uh, before homeopaths we are basically doctors and as a doctors mm. of any institute of uh, a hospital or of a research unit or any wellness clinic we have a responsibility for the society and hence from that responsibility we should go in parallel with what our pm modi wants to do us uh, through this mission means we should improve our facilities and as sir also know we i am from nih i am a student of nih i know what is the facility available in nih but when we compare to other institutes of homeopathy all over india the facilities may not be up to that mark but now the, what as a homeopath as people who are in the bench they should try to upgrade these facilities so that when people click uh, click to this opportunities of homeopathy when they are seeking for homeopathy because nowadays is basically everything on online means for food groceries yeah. everything yeah. we try to see what is available online nearby and when yeah. they will do that they will also go for I mean, they will look they will get that so this is the homeopathy institute which i can go which is nearby to our yeah. nearby to his yeah yeah, yeah yeah with yeah. the hope he is coming to us that there should be facilities what he wants is available in that institute so the basic idea yeah. will be to upgrade yourself uh means as yeah. homeopath we need to upgrade our institutes or our center which is registered on this ayushman bharat so that the facilities which we want the people to get they can get when they come to us that's the basic idea in very thank, thank you so Good thank second. you so much dr partho that is so much uh dr partho thank you so much for your uh, such a wonderful comment uh please stay back the last question because we are uh, one hour 36 minutes we one hour 30 minutes we are continuing with this uh, today's last question we do have many of the question and we have a number of good panelist out here today uh, some of the panelist uh, uh, took part in long duration some of the panelist took part in short duration but uh, comprehensively it is a wonderful uh, webinar what we have been continuing with the uh, with the very eminent uh, panelist of the country and uh, they are all are there in this webinar today my last question is a very important question a very basic question and this question we want to ask to dr himanshu tiwari uh, uh, orko could you bring himanshu dr himanshu on the dais please uh, dr himanshu uh, dr himanshu in uh, cghs a uh, very learned person and uh, and dr himanshu i would like to focus one question to you that as per current data as per current data more than 4300 industry expert i repeat industry experts and professionals have applied to be professor of practice i repeat professor of practice a new category 
of college teachers a new category of college teacher proposed by ugc do you foresee similar thing happening in our college in our colleges in future uh, to be very honest that to be uh, more specific that national institute of homeopathy or calcutta homeopathy medical college is in kolkata somebody some medical officer is practicing is is give, giving his duty at mushidabad and he is treating 150 patient in a day whereas in college whereas in college the the teacher the uh, internees they are getting say uh, 25 30 60 patient in a day this is not my 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 question question is that can i take this expertise of medical officer who is practicing in mushidabad that that he will be teaching he will be coming to the college he will give his expertise to uplift our educational system that is the that is the concept of the ugc and uh, do you foresee this that it can be corpor- incorporated in homeopathy system or medicine like himanshu is very scholar person whether his knowledge can be utilized as a professor in practice in nearby homeopathy college that is my question whether it is be good or it will be it will come in bad shape thank you am i audible yeah yeah, 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 yeah you are audible yeah, you are audible thank you for your kind words sir your uh, encouraging words always motivate us to do better uh, <laughs> while uh, the, coming to the specific question yes uh, this is another thing that is unfolding in front of uh, academia across the world and uh, india as well now uh, if you see the national education policy 2020 we find there is a very specific uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 clause which says that skill a uh, uh, skill based education needs to be uh, needs to be uh, uh, promoted and here what uh, they want is that uh, the real world practice and experience should be brought to the classroom and for that yeah. they uh, they they have specified the professors of practice who will bring up diverse experience to the college room and also augment the faculties in the institute and the second thing it says very nice uh, the perspective that the learner should get the uh, the perspective of a employer and the vice versa for that to happen the industry experts and the professors of practice needs to be there in the college to to uh, to take them to the real world condition so for, say for example as you said very rightly said sir, that someone is practicing in a rural area in a setup where uh, the resources are very limited he is he is having experience in nutritional diseases insect bites and so on so forth while the other set of uh, practitioner who was working in a multi specialty center or a tertiary care uh, center such as sabdarjang hospital aims or uh, parliamentary medical center and so on so forth so they will have a different set of experience with them so uh, while bringing all those kinds of professors of practice we can certainly augment the training uh, of the students and prepare can prepare them better for practicing homeopathy in future over to you sir so thank you so much dr himanshu we are in the end part of this uh, webinar today and uh, uh, dr bidut dr bidut is our secretary uh, of our alumni association uh, dr kollani is a president of our alumni association both of are there uh, in on the dais uh, now i request uh, to uh, bring dr ishwar das sir whether he is there dr das sir is there dr orko is there no okay uh, dr sarkar sir is there ah uh, dr S- uh, das sir is there dr ishwar das sir is there uh, sir co- could you please unmute your could you please unmute ah uh, dr uh, orko uh, maybe dr ishwar das sir is not there dr sarkar sir is there sarkar sir sarkar sir we are we are running very late uh, yeah. we had many many more to uh, listen from you but sir our webinar is today homeopathy by 2030 please give us a very concept note in very small sentences maybe one and two sentences that uh, small note that on homeopathy by 2030 it is not 2030 hmm. it is more than that even yeah. we may not survive 
but homeopathy <laughs> will survive on its own merit ji sir ji sir thank you thank you so much thank you so much sir this is a webinar otherwise uh, it, it if it was offline there might have been a full round of applause for you thank you so much sir thank you so much sir uh, I, i believe orko dr ishoda sir is not there uh, i will request tiwari sir to be on the dais uh, for a very small concept note or uh, if he likes to say in a very small line very uh, very in a small in very short period Uh, Tiwari sir, please. <clears throat> Thank you very much for calling me again. Uh, see, homeopathy has come a long way from just one drug proving of cinchona bark to now yeah. the present condition. You know, we have improved a lot, but yeah. there is no end of progress. We have to go ahead, and some of our science uh, concepts has to be you know scientifically uh, made it logical. like i was thinking of something of chronic diseases miasm the origin if you know because they are very useful in our practice so something can be more advanced and more scientific yeah. can be done along with individualistic approach then we will be more yeah. ahead of time that's yeah. all right Th thank you so much sir thank you so much it was wonderful to listen from you uh, can i uh, orko can i bring uh, uh, mohanti sir on the dais please ah uh, mohanti sir is left left ah uh, yes dr arya sir is not there the our inaugurator he is not there uh, so i will come to uh, come back to one second to dr partho dr partho uh, in very short your concept note regarding homeopathy in 2030 uh right sir so uh, as per my questions research is very important for development of any science and what is we are researching today may become a therapy for everyone tomorrow and digitalization yeah. is the era of the means is the demand of the era digital health and we need yeah. to upgrade ourselves thank you so much dr partho it's a wonderful to uh, listen from you the last uh, we will go uh, to our panelist Uh, Dr. Himanshu Tiwari, Dr. Himanshu, please uh, say a few words. Uh, uh, sir, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah you uh, are audible. Yeah, uh, it it it's been a wonderful webinar, sir. I uh, it really um, um, uh, it feel like it should uh, go on. <laughs> But uh, thank you so much. To, thank you so much. To, to conclude, uh, yeah. to conclude in one line, I would say that we yeah, need to have yeah, right yeah, motives, yeah, right yeah, means. Yeah. and right men class women uh, uh, in the places to foster homeopathy yeah. in the next decades to come thank you. thank you so much dr himanshu i believe dr arya sir is not there in the webinar i believe uh, dr mohanti sir is not there uh, in the webinar i believe dr ishoda sir is again uh, not there in the webinar uh, we do have very senior most uh, uh, a uh, person dr sarkar sir there dr uh, kalani sir is there uh, sir any uh, sir i could not hear you tiwari sir is there very senior person sir uh, i am not uh, i cannot not audible yeah maybe sir maybe sir sir uh, will you permit me to uh, conclude out here the main webinar part then we can discuss Dukalani sir and Dr. Bidun Mukherjee will be there. Can, can you? Uh, can we? Uh, will you give me a permission that to uh, conclude here this uh, okay. webinar today? Then we can discuss. We can discuss. We keep. We can keep on discussing. But question is question answer and the comment uh, and the concept part is over. Dukalani sir, could you uh, could you hear me? Dr. Bidun, could you? Okay sir okay sir uh, okay sir Do Please. sir it is sound is breaking sound is breaking still you are audible but sound is breaking Dr Bidhu yeah, are you there please continue Yeah no, my there. part please is over please continue problem Dr Bidhu my part is over i have gone through the all the question all possible question and it went well 
and I, uh, uh, what I consider is this main web, main question answer webinar and the concept note of webinar is over. Now we can discuss freely. Uh, we can discuss freely. My part is over, Dr. Bidduk. Uh, if you wish to continue, you can continue. Otherwise, by concluding a speech by our secretary or uh, secretary and our president, Dr. Kollani, and secretary, Dr. Bidduk Mukherjee, we can conclude here. Because it's two hours, it's uh, one hour and forty-five minutes. Yeah. We are continuing with this. So, if we end, then it may not be very wonderful one. Please conclude. Please conclude. Yeah. So I will request yeah, uh, Doctor very... Doctor do, uh, do, I will I'll request Doctor Mukherjee, Doctor Bidud Mukherjee, to uh, give a, a concluding speech. After that, we'll come to Doctor uh, Kalani sir. Doctor Mukherjee. Sound is very nice. Uh, it's very. It's an it's an excellent webinar through and through, all through tonight. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we all should thank uh, Dr. Proloy to uh, be a such an so affirmative much. host. And, thank you so uh, much. And it's a great, it's a great pleasure for all of us to uh, enrich our knowledge. And uh, the purpose of the CME seventy five has been served. Now yeah. uh, to all our respected viewers across the globe. We started yeah. the online CME on 25th yeah. of uh, June 2020. Yeah. Orko, can you correct and the this is yeah. the 75th. Yeah, and this is the 75th, 75th. episode. 75th, 75th yeah, so, episode. So, with the active cooperation from alumnus across the globe, from yeah. India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, Canada, USA, so all the people who had been able to participate, who had tried yeah. to uh, join this, and moreover, the uh, Ashirbad from all our yeah. seniors on screen present yeah. over here, respected uh, Kalyani sir, then our uh, Sarkar sir, SK Tiwari sir, Ishwaradas sir had left, Dr. M. P. Arya sir. So a lot Mohan of people sir. are there. Who had been mm -hmm. Mohanty sir, who had been kept uh, blessing us through and through. Uh, but there are a few questions from the uh, viewers. So, Pralai, yeah. uh, Dr. Pralai, yeah. and Dr. Kalyani, sir, uh, yeah. if we can take the questions or we'll answer no, separately. Doctor, 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 doctor Mukherjee, in question answer, we'll not go because very eminent physicians are there in the dais. Like Dr. Tiwari sir, okay. like Dr. Sarkar sir, it will be endless question. So uh, that is the reason we don't want to go into that. But the question will be definitely right. will be answered uh, answered in the in the mainstreaming afterwards. While we and we'll be getting this answer from our concerned panelists that will do it. Okay, that's that's excellent. That's excellent. And uh, yeah. that I think uh, the questions had been there from yeah. Dr. Vijay yeah. Chakma, yeah. Dr. Okay, Obhijit uh, uh, is our our so student. He did uh, BHMS as well as a uh, MD from our our institution. Obhijit will hear from you. Right. Will definitely give you the answer later on. Okay, uh, so we'll be answering these questions in the later part. Now I'll yeah. transfer this to uh, give the conclude. To our respected yeah. Dr. Kalyani, sir. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Sorry, I don't know whether I'm audible or not. Am I audible clearly? Yes. Yes, sir. I was not able to make it clear. It was found as very much disturbing. In any way, in my opinion, this is one sir. of the most most successful CME within these 75 yeah. last CMEs. Every one of us yeah. will remember. We will try to convey to yeah. the higher authority policy makers to implement this as early as possible. But one yeah. thing I just want to remind all of you, it is known to all of you, one language of one sentence of Sri Aurobindo, a great man. Okay. That is, in spite of all the process, humanity is proceeding towards perfection. Equally, homeopathy is definitely proceeding towards perfection in spite of all the process. But what we have to do, simply we have to share our soldiers to make our life successful for the progress of homeopathy from all the mm -hmm. all corners at our level base. So anyway, we are really grateful. We 
pay our heartiest pranam to our senior Dr. Tishwar Das, Sir Dr. Ketiwari, Dr. Mahanti, Dr. Sulimar Sarkar, and my beloved heartiest thanks to my brothers, Dr. Tiwari, Dr. Pal, Dr. Pulas Sharma, Vedun Mukherjee, and all Thank others you, who are participating, listening, viewing, and who will be waving the CAB. We are really highly encouraged by your participation, presence, and encouragement. Expecting that you go on participating, helping, and encouraging us all along. With all this, thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Kalani, sir. Uh, thank you all the panelists out here on the webinar. Thank you all the viewer, all the viewer of our country, all the viewer of our alumni association, all the viewer across the globe. Thank you so much. And permit me to conclude extreme conclusion of this webinar today. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Okay. Thank you. Over to you, Alko. <clears throat>